In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the physics of trains. And why not? This is a lovely little computer game called Railroads Online, and I'm hooked on it at the moment. It's the perfect fusion of a sandbox building game with a train driving simulator. So you can run around in this world, build train tracks, and then you get an authentic driving experience driving the train along them. Every locomotive in the game has been lovingly reproduced, complete with its controls such as the regulator, brakes and so on. You even have to stoke the fire with wood, which is a strange thing instead of using good Yorkshire coal, but I guess nobody's perfect. The physics is so realistic, sometimes I feel the only thing missing is the black soot in my hair after I've finished playing. One of the things I love about games with accurate physics is that they can teach you physics. Here's a young chap on YouTube getting an education in the relationship between power and traction. I don't know if the generators actually do anything or not. It doesn't matter. Let's uh, let's get going here. 100%. Oh my god! What? Hey, bro. I hear you like wheel spins. Holy! Are you serious? Um. Okay. I guess we just got to start it off slow. Holy, it's got so much power, it can just do burnouts. The channel's called Can Gaming, so do drop by if you want to see some Let's Plays in this game. I actually found Railroads Online through him, so thanks for that. What's just happened is he's bought the most powerful locomotive in the game, opened the regulator valve, which sends steam to the cylinders, and he's found that anything but opening it just a crack will make the wheels spin madly. He finds something similar later on when he's got a train of wagons behind him and he starts climbing a steep hill. Give it a little bit more rag. Uh oh. A little bit more rag. 50%. Uh oh, that's too much, too much. See, we passed the wheel spin point. 60% is too much. So eventually he gets to the top of the hill. And he poses the question that was the inspiration for this video. See, but so far, I mean, obviously, I think there's a reason the Hessler's the best engine in the game. That's, it's a crazy. You just, as long as you can avoid the wheel slip problem. Now, I'd love to know how to get the regulator up to 100% without getting wheel slip. That would be, I don't know, if someone's got a solution for that in the comments, let me know down below how to drive this train proper. Because it seems like 60% for me is the cutoff. And once we're past that, the wheels just start spinning and that's the end of it, but... In essence, it's a powerful locomotive, but why hasn't he been able to open the regulator to 100%? To answer this question, we need to look at the physics behind what we're trying to achieve with the locomotive. The purpose of the locomotive is to pull the wagons. It's there to apply a forward tractive force by pushing the rails backwards. If it moves against this force over a distance, what we can say is that the locomotive has done mechanical work. That is, work equals force times distance. And by work, we simply mean the quantity of energy used. So trivially, what this tells us is that if we have freight wagons of a certain weight, and we have to move them up a hill, if we have half the number of wagons, then the same amount of energy will get them up a hill twice as high. What it doesn't tell us is how quickly this happens. For that, we need a measure of the rate at which the energy is applied. We can get that by dividing both sides of this equation by time. So imagine this is the time taken to go from the bottom of the hill to the top. And the term for the rate of use of energy is power. From this we get power equals force times speed. Essentially what this tells us is if you want to go from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill in half the time, i.e. double the speed, you need to double the power. But the energy use is the same. Now, the year is 1900, so I'm going to use imperial units. We measure power in horsepower. One horsepower is the power required to lift 150 pounds force at the rate of one foot per second. One horsepower is the equivalent of 745.7 watts. And what is the SI unit of power? What is the SI unit of power? It's the power required to move one newton at the rate of one meter per second. But it's the same idea, power equals force times speed. Also, I'm pretty sure that James Watt worked in horsepower. In fact, I think he defined it. Anyway, what's all of this got to do with wheel spins? I'm coming to that. 
Now that we have the equation power equals force times speed, we can rearrange it. Force equals power divided by speed. What this gives us is an expression that, assuming that we know the power of the locomotive, we can use to work out the tractive force at any given speed. The game doesn't actually give us the power of any of the locomotives, but I'm going to estimate the power of our wheel spinning monster to be about 500 horsepower. That's a very rough guess and I'll explain how I worked it out later. Now, the power on a steam locomotive is controlled by the regulator, which is a valve that sits between the boiler and the cylinders. When the valve is fully open, the engine can be said to be operating at maximum power. So what we can plot is the theoretical traction force at the wheels for a range of speeds, assuming the regulator is fully open. What we discover as soon as we plot this line is that for a given power or regulator setting, the tractive force reduces with increased speed. Even more crucially, however, as speed approaches zero, the tractive force approaches infinity. Now, of course, infinite force is impossible in the real world, so some other factor has to come into play. And what is that? What will happen as the force increases is that it will exceed the maximum static friction between the train's wheels and the rails. It's static friction because the bit of the wheel that's in contact with the rail is static with respect to the rail. Now this maximum traction force is dependent on a number of things, including the weight of the locomotive and the number of driving wheels. Also dependent on whether there's sand in between the wheels and the track, which is what the sanders are for. Now the reason I've chosen the scale in this graph that I have is we're actually given the maximum traction force for this locomotive. It's 11,240 pounds force. So we can plot this as a horizontal line as it's independent of speed. What this gives us is an area plot of what you might describe as the operational envelope of this locomotive. There's a critical speed at which these two lines meet. Above this speed, the performance of the locomotive is limited by power. The faster the locomotive goes, the lower the tractive force it can produce. Below the critical speed, the performance is determined by traction. It's not possible to go to 100% power because the result will be a loss of traction and a wheel spin. So this is the answer to Kant's question, which is, how do you go to 100% on the regulator? The answer is, you drive the train above the critical speed. I haven't actually driven the Hessler yet, I've been doing just fine with the Cook Mogul, but I'm willing to bet that if he got the Hessler running nice and fast down a straight bit of line, he could get the regulator to 100%. It would be interesting to see if the developers ever publish the power levels they're using for these locomotives. How did I estimate that the Hessler has about 500 horsepower? Well, it appears to be wheel slipping at 60% power at a speed I guess to be about 10 miles per hour. Of course, there are no speedometers in this game either. The phenomenon that I've described here, that is a train being limited by traction and not being able to use high power at low speeds, is very real. It's harder to spot nowadays because trains are increasingly multiple units, which have lots of driving wheels, so loads of traction and electric so there's no engine tone to give you an idea of how hard the train is working. So, as we reach journey's end, I thought I'd leave you with a nice illustration of this principle in the real world. This is a British Rail Class 43, the famous Intercity 125, the fastest diesel locomotive in the world, pulling out of Newcastle Railway Station in 2007. It's got one of the original Valenta diesel engines, which only actually have five power settings, you'll hear the train move off on the lowest power setting. And then, as the train gets faster, you'll hear the driver step up through the power settings. Let's listen.
I think that a fair few of you who are watching this video are young enough that you will get to visit space. When you do, the vehicle that you fly in won't look like this. It will look like this. 